Okay, so next up is uh, Fiona Tay. She's a Ruby and JavaScript developer for Pivotal Labs, based out of San Francisco, and she's going to be talking to us about why JRuby. Actually, oh, wait, no. This works, right? You guys can hear me? Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm really excited to be here because I actually used to live in um, the Inland Empire, so anyone else here from the Il Inland Empire? Yeah! <laughs> All right. So the first thing I want to say about my talk is that originally on the schedule it says why I like JRuby, and you should like it too. But that's not actually what my talk is about. My talk's actually about why you should use JRuby sometimes and not other times. <laughs> All right. So just for a quick introduction, JRuby is an implementation of Ruby on top of the JVM. So now you know what JRuby is. And JRuby, the J stands for Java. So in this presentation, I'm going to be telling you why you should be using JRuby. And this is from the perspective of somebody like me who just wants to make web apps. I'm not going to tell you anything about compiler internals. Hopefully, you don't care about that. <laughs> And this is about the good, the bad, and the ugly, just like that movie. <laughs> so a little about me. I'm a Rubyist. I've been doing Ruby for about three years. And I also, I mainly do Rails. Yay, Rails. <laughs> so I'm also a JRubyist. For the last six months, I've been working on this product called Open Chorus. It's an open source initiative. It's basically um, a collaborative platform for data analysis. Think of it as Google Docs for data scientists. And as far as I know, we are one of the biggest JRuby pro projects out there. We have over 10,000 tests. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about JRuby. So JRuby is a Ruby implementation. So to switch your project over from Ruby to JRuby, it's basically step one, install JRuby, and step two, write Ruby code. So here's a code sample. If you're using RVM, <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. So if you guys are using RVM to manage your Rubies, then it's as simple as typing RVM use. And if you're not using RVM, you should consider using it or RBM to manage your Rubies. And it's the same as um, normal Ruby. So they are, they are interchangeable to an extent. Hopefully, 1 plus 1 is the same under all Ruby implementations. <laughs> if you find that that's not true, let me know and I'll help you report a bug. Um, so the most popular implementation is MRI, otherwise known as Mat Ruby implementation. And it's basically the default Ruby. So if you don't know what Ruby you're using, you're probably using MRI. So I guess most of you are using MRI. Then the next most popular one is JRuby, which is what I'm talking about. And then there are also a couple of other red-headed stepchildren. No offense, man. <laughs> <laughs> so under the hood, how, the, how do these Ruby implementations work? Well, you write Ruby code, and it's interpreted by an interpreter. Yeah, it's not rocket science. Um, but in JRuby, the implementation of the interpreter is written using the Java virtual machine. And that's basically your secret sauce, because a lot of the benefits of using JRuby come from the how awesome this implementation is. Shout out to the JRuby team. So as I said earlier, these implementations should be interchangeable. but that's not really true because some implementations are different. And you could say that some implementations are more equal than others. 
So some of the important differences that um, occur even though 1 plus 1 equals 2 is speed of execution. Well, how good is the implementation? Support for external libraries and implementation bugs. Sadly, the Ruby spec is not really um, well laid out and MRI is popularly known as a reference implementation. So history of JRuby, it's been around since 2002, which makes it kind of old now. <laughs> it's actually newer than, it's actually older than the latest 1.1 1.9 Ruby interpreter, and it has had traction in real projects since 2005. So JRuby in the real world, ThoughtWorks is uh, ThoughtWorks has really popularized using JRuby in the enterprise because Java is used in a lot of enterprise projects. And you guys might not know this, but Twitter started out as a Rails app on plain MRI, and after a few years, and they were experiencing scaling problems. They did change over to JRuby for a short while, but sadly today they are not part of the they are, they are not part of the <laughs> Ruby <laughs> community. Well, they are kind of, <laughs> but they run on the Scala stack mainly now. So the good, this is the exciting part, guys. <laughs> <I'm w> <laughs> <laughs> so here's uh, the first compelling reason for why you should use JRuby is access to Java libraries. Well. Everyone and his dog writes Java. <laughs> well, maybe not their dogs, but there's a lot of enterprise software out there written using Java. And I'd like to say some, highlight some of the most important libraries that are available using JRuby. So if you're, if you're any of you guys interested in doing nat natural language processing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so Stanford, the Stanford parser is the NL P library of choice and it's implemented in Java and if you're using JRuby you can call it just like it was a Ruby library. The next one is email. Yes, I know Action Mailer is part of Rails but Action Mailer doesn't provide a lot of fine grained control especially if you want to play with hitters or do anything fancy. Um, Java Mail is actually a really great library. I haven't used it but I've heard it's great and there's actually a Ruby wrapper around it. So how do you do this? So JRuby has really deep integration with um, Java. I'm not really sure what the JRuby team did, but they, did a, they made a really great user experience. You can directly call Java code from Ruby. So I'm gonna show you a code snippet for this use case. Suppose you wanted to create a desktop app using Ruby, and you, d you didn't know of any good Ruby libraries for doing that. So anyone know of any good Java libraries for desktop apps? Did I hear a sing? <laughs> ding, 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 we have a winner. <laughs> All right, so what does it look like to call Java code? Well, the first step is to require Java so they can use Java code. Then you'll notice that in this code, we are setting up a few components for the desktop app. And you'll notice that this looks almost, <laughs> almost <laughs> like um, a canonical Ruby code. So you, uh, you can call the constructor just like a Ruby constructor. And the second part, which is I think is really cool, is that in Java, the, um, the convention is to use camel case for your method names. But in JRuby, you can call these methods using their underscore equivalent. So you don't have to worry about your code looking too ugly even though the camel case version works too. So apart from that, I, you can also um, use libraries that are written in other languages built on top of the JVM, j such as Scala, Clojure, and Groovy. Scala is a really popular language for functional programming, and JRuby has special support for that. And Clojure is also another really popular language. Don't tell anyone, but you heard it here first, Clojure is a new sexy. So, and if you're lucky, somebody has already made a Ruby gem that wrapped the Java library, so you won't even have to deal with the Java code itself. And just a friendly pointer, it would be better if you are planning on calling out to Java code, it's also a good design pattern to wrap it in a gem rather than calling the Java code sprinkled throughout your Ruby code because it kind of looks ugly. 
So the next compelling reason is that with JRuby, it offers easier app development. But I would like to point out that this is not really a, this, that's not really precise because I don't think anything can be easier than Git push Heroku master. So it's only really relevant if you're deploying to a large server system or if your system is deploying it to a large server system. So the advantage of using JRuby is that there are tools for you to leverage e existing Java-based deployment infrastructure. And it comes in really handy if, if you have a sysadmin who is deploying your project who's familiar with Jav the Java deployment stack. So the primary tool for this is called Warbler. Warbler is a Ruby gem which provides a number of rig tasks, yay rig, <laughs> that help you compile your file compile your app into a single binary WAR file. And this is a standard Java deploy file format. So it's if you have a sysadmin who has been deploying WAR files before, then you can just give them this other WAR file and they'll be like they wouldn't even have to know that it was a Ruby um, project unless you told them of course. So apart from that there are a number of other deployment options. The most important one is Talkbox or maybe not the most important one, but one prominent one. Talkbox provides additional services on top of your server that you might want, such as load balancing or clustering. So the third and most compelling reason about using JRuby is that it offers better performance. Simply put, it's a better compiler <laughs> than MRI, and it benefits from improvements to the JVM, which is continually under development. As you know, as you might know, um, ja Java Seven is out, and it has special support for dynamic languages, which JRuby, which JRuby leverages, and, and I've heard later reports that that this makes it even faster. Um, another point is that because the JRuby compiler is a just-in-time compiler, running your app on top of JRuby actually makes your app go faster as time goes on, kind of like how wine gets better over time, except that your app is running and not in a wine cellar. <laughs> All right, so another reason for better performance is that you have access to highly optimized Java libraries. So what I mean by that is that, for instance, if you want to parse XML using JRuby, it's really fast because you can use the Java library for XML parsing. Yeah, Java is really good at XML parsing. Okay, so the bad. So these are like some really important caveats and I think that this is something that's not really talked about enough because with any choice of technology, you should be aware of what the downsides are. Gem availability. Some gems are just not available under JRuby. Sad face. So typic how, what, what's the deal on this situation? Gems written in pure Ruby work with JRuby Gems with C extensions don't work with JRuby. But what does this mean for you? Typically, these gems written with using C extensions are older, less maintained gems. So it's really not that big a deal. Sometimes you can fix the ex existing gem. Like some gems will claim that they're not JRuby compliant, but it could be as simple as changing out dependencies that they are using. For instance, um, a lot of gems, they say that their dependency is the um, it's a canonical markdown processing gem, but there are actually really good um, alternatives to that that are compatible with just JRuby and MRI. So it could be as simple as that. Um, in my experience, on my project, we actually tried to patch a gem called Q Classic, which is a lightweight job management system developed by Heroku. Um, it actually took more work than as expected, which was a bad <laughs> thing. Um, the reason why it took so long was that we were doing some complicated database um, transactions and the way that do the way that you uh, interact with the database is really different with C extensions and MRI and the Java based database adapters. But the caveat is your knowledge may vary. So the way that I would generalize this problem of gem availability is that it's basically a platform trade-off. With any platform that you choose, there are some things that are better supported and some things that are not as well supported. 
So it really depends on which kind of libraries are more important to you. Because with JRuby, you get the Java libraries, which is a huge thing, but you lose out on some of the gems that are not compatible with uh, because of the C extensions. So another downside that, that applies to those of you who do TDD, at my company, we Pivotal Labs, we do test-driven development. So that means that during development, we're continually running, um, running tests like, you know, a few times an hour, and the f and there's a long app startup time, especially when you have large Rails projects, mainly do due to Rails class loading. And as you guys might know, Spork is a tool which helps reduce that, but Spork doesn't really work with JRuby. We've tried to make it work, but it hasn't. So that's a huge drag on developer productivity. And as far as we can tell, it's it's c'est la vie. There's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> so another downside about using JRuby is that it's a less mature technology. Um, MRI is still the default, and it has been for the past 20 years of Ruby. JRuby has definitely matured a, long, a lot since the past few years, and the JRuby core team is really responsive to bugs that we have reported. But this is still a problem because, for instance, libraries are developed uh, against MRI. So there may be bugs in libraries that come up only when you're using um, JRuby, and that's, that's really annoying because you have to fix that problem yourself. So the ugly, what's the ugly? Well, the ugly is basically everything that doesn't fit under the good or the bad. And for me, it's basically concurrency. So what is concurrency? Concurrency is when several computations are executing simultaneously and potentially interacting with each other. That's a Wikipedia definition. But what does it mean for JRuby? So, MRI doesn't have real threats, and I think that this was something that was mentioned in an earlier talk. MRI's implementation of Ruby has a global interpreter locks, and basically when you have global, global interpreter locks, your, thre your threats don't really execute in parallel. While JRuby has real threats, that's, that's great, that's awesome. So why is it awesome? So threats are actually a major innovation in the history of computing. They've been around for maybe about 30 years, and they're really important for concurrent programming. And the fact that MRI doesn't have it should really be a cause for concern. And I'm sure that in the future, maybe people will all move to JRuby because they like concurrency. Who knows? So why is concurrency great? Well, concurrency is great because your program executes more quickly. But why is that better? Well, one of the big reasons is it makes your program cheaper to scale because you can um, run your web server in multiple threaded modes. So let me give you an example. Suppose you're, suppose you're running um, one server, one physical server. On one physical server, you can run maybe two Ruby processors. processors. That's because um, Ruby is really memory intensive. But on one server that you're using JRuby, you can probably use two Ruby processors, but you can run them with four threads each, which basically means you get four times the performance for the same bug. So um, another, this is also applicable even if you're not, um, even if you're not managing your own servers, you can use um, JRuby on Heroku, such that with one dyno, you can get more bang for your buck. So one point I want to make about this is that concurrency is not free. So what do I mean by concurrency is not free? Well, running your program in multi-threaded mode isn't that easy. Even up to now, there's still bugs in non-thread safe libraries. I did a quick search on, on GitHub and there have been bugs reported in Rails and Airbrake recently. The severity of these bugs may be um, of varying, maybe maybe varying, but it's still it's still a point to keep in mind that libraries are developed without a focus on concurrency, and if they're bugs, you're probably going to be the first one to discover them. 
this especially applies if you're for concurrency and thread safety in your own app. Writing thread safe is thread safe code is difficult, but it's something that's really important as hardware limitations face us. So concurrency is worth it because concurrency offers huge performance improvements. As hardware improves and we have a greater number of of cores on each processor, this is something that MRI can't leverage, but JRuby can leverage. In fact, I would like to share a quote with somebody who told me about the experience of JRuby. They were spending over 20 grand a month on servers, and he said that it's irresponsible to run MRI if you are managing your own server farm. So take that as you wish. Threads are Threads are kind of the future, and as we reach hardware limitations, um, this is something that you might want to consider. So the decision. After I've told you all about JRuby, how can you decide whether you want to use JRuby? Well, the long and the short is JRuby is a non-standard choice, and that comes with its downsides. So you should you use JRuby? Do you want to use J Java libraries? Is your problem that you're trying to solve in a domain where there are extensive Java libraries? Do you want to interface with enterprise Java code? Do, do you want to um, um, do you want to do a domain where the Java alternatives are much faster than the C extensions? Like for instance, it's, do you want to parse XML? <laughs> The second reason why you should use JRuby is do you want to leverage Java-based deployment architecture? Is your app going to be deployed by system administrators who have no interest in learning how to deploy Ruby? And the third reason is do you need good performance? I know that previously when I said about performance, I just said it was a good thing, but that's not really true. It depends on the needs of your app. Do you anticipate having high load like Twitter, or is your app going to be visited by one person once a month? If you said no to uh, all of the previous questions, then I would say that you shouldn't use JRuby. Although the downside to JRuby, i.e. That, that it's not a default implementation, may be small, any downside is bad downside in terms of economics. So if you had no good reason no compelling good reason to use JRuby, you should stick with MRI. But don't worry, even if you choose not to use JRuby now, we'll still be there for you in a few years when you realize that you have performance problems. Lots of people switch for performance problems, and Twitter is one of them. There are a lot of guides available on the internet from people who have done the switch. And if you want to get started with JRuby, I would recommend this utility release by the JRuby team, which helps you assess your project's um, readiness to switch over to JRuby by checking whether you have dependencies which are not JRuby compliant, or if you have code that may execute differently under JRuby. So I'd like to thank Pivotal Labs and the JRuby team, and thanks. <laughs> mm. Mm.